everybody, welcome back to the dumbest modeling channel on all of YouTube, uh, Pitstain Hobbies. Uh, we're getting back to work on the Agora models, Leopard 2A6. Let's just change our view from my ugly mug. Um, so go to agoramodels.com, uh, links in the description below. They have a lot of cool models, not just this tank. They have, they have, sh they have ships, they have planes, they have, you name it, a lot of cars. Um... They got some cool uh, Optimus Prime going on there. Really, that's pretty sick, actually. Uh, they, they're all they're all awesome. I mean, once you're building these giant scale models, they, they can't not be cool. Um, so either way, we, we did everything in pack one, stages one through eight. And now we have pack two, which is stages uh, nine through something. Because <laughs> I didn't bother to do my homework and write down all the stage numbers. That's 16, 15, 13. They get, yeah, we did a lot of nice stages. Ooh, got some fun turret mechanicals here. So this is gonna be this is gonna be a cool issue, and we're also gonna double check our little pack thirteen here. This is our little addendum pack, and I'm just gonna go through this see if there's anything. Pack two, stage ten. Pack two, stage ten. So we got a couple bits on stage ten that there are parts in here for. I believe it is a uh, to do with the recoil spring. Um, yeah, gun bow recoil. So we're gonna we're gonna keep this handy for ten, for uh, stage ten. We'll be right back with stage nine. All right. Nothing super tricky here. You just pull the LED wire through this little plastic tubey doohickey. Make sure you got the tapered opening facing out. Pull the LED through there. Don't pull too hard. You don't want to snap a cable. Okay, and then we're gonna just we feed it through the barrel and just push it in the tip right there There we go. That's it There we go. We got got an LED in the tip of the barrel. I don't know what it does It's either an IR blaster or it's a LED a muzzle flash one or the other um, well, 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 you'll find out when I find out uh, Don't spoil it. In the, don't spoil it in the comments Okay That's that and we got part of this breech assembly here. And da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da, da -da -da. we just push her on there. So it looks like they want the little hole. There's a little hole on the barrel. There's a tiny hole in there. And they want the side with the ramp to uh, be alignated with that little hole on the barrel area there. So you should end up with that. There we go. Well, that was uh, that was nine. And then we got some track links. Um, I'm gonna do all the track links in one sitting. I, I go over them in uh, pack one, the quick and you know quick little how-to on tapping them together. Just go check out the pack one video. Um, but I'm gonna assemble many, many track links uh, during, a, during a live stream. So, there we go. We'll be right back. Okay, so we've got a couple of our addendum parts from Pack 13 here. We've got a new spr oh, sorry, a new spring for stage 101 and a new 102 spring. This spring we're going to use a little bit later, but it's basically stiffer than the spring in the kit to assist with uh, improved performance of the gun barrel up down. Most likely, uh, the original spring was a little bit on the thin, soft side, and the barrel might have been bouncing a little bit while, you, while you're driving the tank. Uh, that's a common issue with a lot of RC tanks. So, <laughs> yeah, Agora's not the first one to run into that problem, but they gave us a screw to fix it. Good on them. And a slightly softer spring that you're going to replace on this recoil assembly. Um, apparently, uh, you know, the spring on here might have been a little too stiff. So one was too soft, one was too hard. She's never happy. Here we go. So we got a new spring. We're gonna we're gonna unscrew this little uh, flange screw. We're gonna take the spring off. We're gonna put the new one on. Nice and easy. All right. We'll be right back. Well, we got a funny little blooper. Um, but we missed it because I unscrewed the screw without first unhooking the spring from this white lever here, and uh, she went a flying once the screw came out. So what we're going to do is we're not going to make that mistake again. We're going to put the screw in with the spring first, and then we will have it captive. Sounds like I'm keeping people hostage in my basement. 
There we go. Just just all you people watching my videos. Oh, look at this. Me screwing something in live on camera. What a treat of special for everyone. Okay. And then we just uh, we just want to grab some little itty bitty little some little needle nose pliers. They're these little curved guys. They're quite nice. And just grab onto the loop and show how inept you are with a lack of dexterity like myself and she's clipped on there so now that's the new oh i can already feel yeah this is this is a little yeah that's a definitely softer spring that's all for that one we'll be right back with uh some more pro tips from the idiot of the month well that's it with stage 10 uh just follow the instructions a screw goes here a screw goes here a screw goes there the wire just make sure you route it as per the instructions a couple little washery doodads go right there and there is your uh, well, mostly completed barrel and uh, recoil assembly. So that's pretty nice. Yeah, looks good. I guess it goes that way when it's in the tank. Yeah, that makes sense. The bore evacuator always goes with the lump on the top, just so you're aware. Uh, next up is uh, 11. And before 11, we do have a little pro tip for you. You get a million of these little bags of screws, CP, AP, BP, FP, you know, BM, AM... Uh, if you get one of these little parts trays, you can get these at like arts and craft stores, Amazon, etc. This one, this one came with little stickers, um, and you just, I just put a sticker and I write the letter for all the spare screws because you get about one spare of every screw in every stage, and it's good to keep them handy because once you build this part work, I promise it will not be your last. You're gonna want to build more part works, or you already have built a bunch of part works, and you'll build this one too. Every part work kind of has uh, similar yet different things, but if you ever needed the spare screw, you could just visually match up a couple. And so, and it also just makes life easier to be somewhat organized. It's about the only thing in my world that is organized besides the beer shelf in my fridge. Okay, onward and upward to stage 11. Okay, something to just keep an eye out for. In stage 11, there are some very, very small bits in here. And when you open a Ziploc bag, there'll be these two itty-bitty little tiny metal rods. They're barely a millimeter thick. Do not lose these. You need these. Okay, these are parts 11.6 and 11.7. Uh, preferably, uh, put them... If you have one of those, like, magnetic parts trays, you could put them in there. Otherwise, I'm just using my screwdriver for now um, to make sure my clumsy butt does not lose them. Because with my luck, I would. And we got some more screw bags and some little bits and pieces of plastic. Some more of the um, uh, some more of the, the mantlet for the barrel. Uh, so I'm going to get these slapped together as per the instructions. And if I have a problem or I think something may be tricky, I'll be right back. Little tidbit here. Um, in stage 11 steps 1 through 4, they want you to slip this LED into the top of the mantlet and then put this plate on top and um, I've I tried a few times and I'm just a bit of an oaf and a bit clumsy so I decided to instead crazy glue it on there if you're using crazy glue be very careful and you have to hit it with zip kicker right away or else you could fog up this LED don't do that if you have clear UV resin or you're more patient than me, than some rubber cement or some clear canopy glue or some, you know, something like this. Um, I would uh, definitely glue this in. It gives it a nice, this is, I believe, the infrared emitter. It's most, that's what makes most sense to me. And you want it really centered in there nice and at the proper angle uh, to give accurate, accurate hits to the target at the end of the build. I'm pretty sure this is the IR emitter. Uh, I could be proven wrong later. I've been known to be an idiot on occasion, but I would glue it onto that little thing. If you're, again, if you're using CA glue, be very careful. Hit it with uh, accelerator. CA zip kicker is what I have. Hit it with that right away. And uh, then it's nice, nice and solid and positive. I'm going to get this screwed down and then we're going to put on a couple flaps with those tiny little pins I showed you before. We'll be right back. Okay, so this pin, the instructions do say there is a a wider end um, on the screen. It's to the right. That's the knurling to uh, 
make it grab on to the hole when you push it in there and you wanna just get it flush you just use your finger your fingernail it'll push it in there plenty same thing with the other tiny pin all right and that one's so small that's a that's a camera curse for me I'm gonna drop it or it's gonna go flying so I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do this and I'll be right back okay um, <clears throat> so uh, we got our little we got our little flappy do doohickey um, all all on there nice it's actually nicer than the way Tamiya does it um, or hang long for that matter um, the metal the metal in there is definitely better than the plastic um, you know version it's not as plastic is definitely not as robust we're gonna take our updated spring from pack 13 okay we're gonna put it right on that peg there and then we're gonna lay our barrel down in here um, so we wanna get our there we go we're going no nope, we're going this way okay and no we're not we're going this way hold on a second Am I doing something wrong here let's see that goes there that goes there okay yeah no that's where it goes we just got to push her down okay it's gonna be a little tricky but ah there goes the spring there's this little pocket in here for the spring and uh, we're going to put that pocket on that spring and then we've got to push down on this and at the same time hold it in the channel get our two little plastic flappy doohickeys on here and and this is yeah this is not something i'm going to do on camera but we will get it done we're, we're more than capable i i think we'll be right back okay so uh, that's pack 11 other than more track links <laughs> which we're saving for a track link building marathon on uh, some random live stream pack 12 now in this pack um if we look at the instructions let's see what we get here it's uh, save everything for stage 15 for okay all right well that was a short pack 12 <laughs> I'm sure there's a rhyme or reason they, they, they you know these these instructions get made in CAD by the manufacturer and that's eh, okay that's fine but they have notations at least so that's a good thing so there's a reason we didn't put these in because in the pictures for putting this barrel assembly in this little guy's already installed and it's probably helps you hold it down instead of having to fight the spring so much. Um, but there's got to be a reason for that, and we will find out. So that's pack 12, and I guess we're just going to move on to pack 13. I'll be right back with those bits. Okay, here's all the pack 13 parts. More track links for our future marathon. And lovely little smoke dischargers. Look at that. Lovely little smoke grenade launchers there. Nicely molded details, I gotta say, and it's all it's all one part, so very not fiddly to put together. Uh, we're just gonna oh, that barrel. <laughs> He's standing in attention, I'll tell you that. Okay, um, huh, are you happy to see me, or is that 120 millimeter smoothbore in your pocket? There we go. That is a very nerdy tank joke, <laughs> but the tank people will all get it and just put their hand in their forehead and shake. Go, oh, Ian, oh, oh boy, low hanging fruit there. We're gonna get these screwed on and we will be right back. Okay, well, we got pack 13 done. Our smoke dischargers are on and looking lovely. They even tie in with the camo pattern painted on the tank pretty well. That's a nice touch, some, some nice planning going on there with the paint schemes. It's not modeler, like obsessive compulsive, perfect, perfect, that's pretty damn good. I couldn't have done much better myself. I, I promise you that. If I painted these parts separately, trying to get the patterns matched up, that would not be easy. So kudos to uh, to Agora on getting that paint job to line up really nice. Uh, off to pack uh, 14. Yeah. What do we got here? 16, 15, 14. I got to get one of those lapel microphones because when I turn away from my... Uh, my condenser mic my voice gets a little uh, quieter so here's 14 and we've got turret baskets and some more track links our theme for <laughs> every stage more track links there we go I think I did the cowbell joke already so I won't replay that 
Yeah, I can only recycle the same joke so many times for the same audience. We got a couple, a little bag, a couple little plastic bits in here. Those look rather important. And there's our track links. Um, these seem fairly straightforward. Yeah, okay, it's gonna be easy. We're just gonna push on a few plastic parts and that's it, because uh, this doesn't even come with screws. We don't need any. Cool, we'll be right back. Very apropos, the uh, the A-Team soundtrack just came on. <clears throat> and stage 14, we don't actually install those parts just yet. Um, well, one of them you can, but um, they're just press-on parts. And it's probably better to not put them on because we're going to be flipping this thing around and we don't want to break any plastic bits off. Again, this is not a toy. It is a model. In case anyone was wondering. Okay, just because it's a ready-to-run tank that's been uh, sent to you completely disassembled, the joy is in the building for me. I love putting things together. So here's 15... Looks like the, uh, yep, the CCT key, uh, uh, CITV, CCTV camera. Um, different terminologies from different militaries around the world, but basically this is the uh, articulating camera for the commander to, like, peep around in. There we go. So he has this little guy. The uh, the gunner has his, ca his, his sights up here, and uh, this is the commander's little personal television. Now, I did find out why we don't put on... The stage 12 parts yet is because a couple of screws to hold this sucker on are underneath where this plate would go to hold the barrel elevation assembly in place. So we're going to get this. It looks pretty, pretty elementary. We're just going to, yeah, just there's a few plastic pieces to screw together and we will BRB. As suspected, um, we're not putting those parts there because we had to put two screws here. For the commander's uh, commander's uh, CI CCTV, his little his little video periscope. Let's just call it that for the layperson. Um, the tank people know. I know what I mean. And do and there we go. Now we're gonna take our stage twelve parts and get these installed for barrel elevation. Cool. And we got to put on this little bracket doohickey and some screws. And that is not worthy of recording so i will be right back not that it really needs to be said again um but when you're going into die cast metal with a screw always put some oil on the screws these are not the finest machine threads um they're actually uh ep screws um my previous models p meant plastic they're threaded a little coarse and don't don't push all your downward force with this thing sitting on the camera um, assembly because you might crack something off so I'd say tip it up a little and then then bear down with your screwdriver and just just tighten until it doesn't wobble anymore that's it that's all you need um, so that part's on now and time to mount this sucker up and uh, that should go right about there I'm gonna make sure with the instructions we'll be right back And <clears throat> just like that, we are done with pack 15. Well, with stage 15. I mean, because we've got parts in pack 12 in here. There you go. Nice and easy. Don't over tighten those three screws for the barrel elevation unit. Just snug them with two fingers until they're well snug. Um, and then go a tiny bit more. You don't want to overdo it with plastic in the plastic. You don't strip that out. That's an important mechanism on the model for sure. Uh, now we've got uh, obviously some track links, but we're not doing those live on these builds. We're gonna because they're boring as they're boring as all get out. Um, we got 16 bunch of parts. There you go, mostly all plastic bits. We're gonna put on. All right, there we go. Yeah. A little the the bottom plate for the uh, for the turret bustle. And some other turret accoutrement. Very nice. And more track links. And some screws. And some more little tiny plastic bits. All right. Track links to the side. It's like a cooking show. We're just going to put that to the side now. I'm going to prepare those near the end of the meal. Um, EP screw also. Save your extra screws. There we go. Don't know if we'll need them. Can't hurt to have them. All right. We'll be right back. 
Okay, we did a tiny little modification here. Um, this spool that goes right here, uh, we wrapped it in some thin string, and I dyed it gray with uh, just, uh, to me, a Penaline accent color. Uh, this spool had, uh, from the best sources I could find, had basically phone cable on it. Um, the tank was developed during the Cold War, and they were probably like, wanted a way to have hardwired, non-interceptable communications with a command vehicle. So they would carry this spool of stuff here, and it would run back, and there'd literally be a telephone in the command bunker, <clears throat> instead of using the radio, because the enemy could be listening. And uh, that's that. Once we... The hardest part is just fitting it in a little... Fitting a little hole. Any day now. Let's see here. Is one hole bigger than the other? Are they the same size? Probably not. And this is... This is a small detail. Is she in there? Almost. Ah, uh, I'll be back. Okay, well, my choice to spray this thing with flat clear made that hole just the eatiest bit um, tight. So that's on me. Uh, if you're not adding uh, a flat clear to this, you won't have similar issues there. Um, we got to put on this little back plate here and then the bottom panel below it. And this has to slot in. There we go. Perfect. Okay, a few screws and we'll be right back. Okay, and we're done with uh, with 16. There we go. That's That was easy. Um, all that stuff is on. We still haven't put on the baskets. Um, they haven't told us to. There's a reason for that. Um, they're kind of a, a slide-in, snap-fit, press-fit type thing, and it's just plastic pins holding them on, so they probably want to keep them off of the model for a little while because they are likely a tad delicate maybe, which is expected. I mean, every model I've built, damn, if I sneeze the wrong way, something will fall off. Um, this is built really well. Everything is fit together very nicely so far. Um, really good. The press fit parts, I'm not worried about them. No glue, everything super tight, nice, good tolerances. Um, so there we go. That was, uh, that was uh, the end of uh, pack two. Obviously, we didn't build any of the tracks, or this episode would have taken six hours longer. Not really. But, you know, the tracks are just fiddly and repetitive and, you know, whatever. Um, we're going to do them all in one shot. But I think it's pretty damn cool. No one wants to see my face again like I did in part one. So I'm not going to go to that what-do-you-think phase. Um, but, yeah, what do you think? <laughs> um, again, uh, Agora models Leopard 2A6, 116 scale. This thing's getting cooler by the minute. It has more features than I initially even thought it did, which is which is a nice surprise. Uh, Agoramodels.com. Uh, you can go get yours uh, after you apply for your mortgage. Um, no, I mean, all these part works are uh, a little on the pricey side. So, uh, but they're so fun to build and they're so cool. And this is already getting a little, uh, little on the hefty side. It's nice. Nice and weighty. Um, but uh, this, this little flappy system... Uh, hello, Tamiya. You should use this one. Very nice. Excellent. Okay, guys. Uh, like, comment, uh, subscribe, whatever it is. Do the thing. Check the links in the description, all that fun stuff. Send me hate mail. I love you. I'll see you next time. Adios, everybody.